This was not really planned. It was uh, I was uh, driving home from my parents' place where I've been spending the last couple of days. And uh, on the way back, I kind of remembered there was this special place close to the freeway that I always wanted to film with my drone. And uh, what better way not to waste a golden hour was to just to drop off here for a couple of uh, minutes, maybe 20 minutes or so, and uh, shoot some fantastic footage uh, here from this place. I think you would be really amazed that you can find this kind of place in the middle of Denmark. It's uh, where they harvest or they mine limestone and everything is closed down, the machines have stopped and it's a mag magnificent place. The limestone quarry lies east of the city Faxe, which is located in the eastern part of Denmark. The quarry is a 63 million year old seabed where sharks, crocodiles and squids were swimming among lovely corals. These along with other accumulated sea creatures and other plant organisms formed the limestone. This is really a fantastic place that is definitely worth a visit. More information can be found through a link in the description below. Let's just take off and I will show you. Let's get airborne first and then we can mess around with the camera settings afterward. Oh, let's put this one away. Sunglasses. I can manage without sunglasses right now. So let's get going. So let's see what we have here. We can start by switching it into video and maybe go a little bit further up so we can get a good glimpse of the place. Let's enable the video. So we record something. And right now it's really, really, really overexposed. So let's just fix that. Let's go in the camera settings here under manual. Stop the video, manual camera settings. What we want to do here is we want to crank up the aperture as high as we can. And then we got to put this one down to 1 over 60. Maybe that was a little bit too much. So we just get it to a point where it's slightly underexposed. So, In case you're wondering what filters I've been using in this video, it's the Freewell Variable ND filters which I find very useful because that only requires me to have two filters in my bag and they can be adjusted very nicely to the ND strength that I need. That combined with the aperture, the variable aperture on the Mavic Pro 2 that gives me a lot of flexibility. Especially when you film in a bright place like this, it's very useful to have the filters to slow down that shutter to the double of the frame rate. So let's just see here what we can do here. Let's see. Uh, I want to make sure that the video settings are correct. It's sunny, it's 4K 30. Let's do the full because we need that for this place. 30 FPS. Color style is none. We don't care about that. Right now, color is normal. Let's go to D log M. We can't do the D log M unless we go H265. Let's go in here, D log M, so we do it flat, so we get the maximum dynamic range in the footage. That's what we want. By the way, do you enjoy my content? If you do, then consider subscribing to my weekly tips, tests and tutorials. So now I think we are more or less ready to fly around and check out this area. Let's just go up into the maximum height. Now we are having visitors. That is normally either good or bad. It's not really to say. Let's do a small point of interest here. So we can get a nice sweep of the area. The nature here is completely different and that is of course because it's done by humans. Uh, the, there's a big collection of limestone here in the ground, so, uh, but it doesn't look like uh, anything else around here. 
let's just do this let's try and fly over here to this area this is closed for public so you are not even allowed to go in there so there's not a big chance that uh, you will fly over people at least this is a workplace so people are not supposed to be in there after replaying the footage and checking up on the matter i actually found out that i was wrong about the place was closed off for the public you're actually welcome to visit and explore on your own, but I can't imagine that that applies when the heavy machinery is running. So check up on the matter before you decide to go. See what we have here. There's a whole road system for the machines in here. And I'm talking like this is my backyard. <laughs> It's my first time flying here, so. But I really want to go here for a long, long time. But I forget how every time I drove by this. So, so now it's a really, really, really nice chance to get some stunning footage from this place. And of course, I chose my Mavic 2 Pro because that's the drone for this job. Free video samples from this location can be downloaded through a link in the description below. In this way, you can play around with the footage and color grade it yourself. Let's just try and tilt the gimbal a little bit here and do like a nice... ...scan of the surface here. I'm starting to having a little bit of a breakup, so I guess it's because there are some stuff in the way so let's just turn the drone the other way start to move back so this is the area where i'm located somewhere over here in the middle where all the machinery is uh, put So I should be able to hear the drone very soon. be fun to get back home and once you see this footage I will color grade it so it looks really nice. Let's just tilt the camera up here. So let's see what else we can find out here. Let's do a point of interest around this pile of uh, sandstone what do you think about short flight videos like this then let me know in the comment below so if we go down to around 50 meters maybe there's a good chance that we are not colliding with anything in 50 meters so like this and then if i take this one up here maybe i fly a little bit closer to this And let's say that we want to film those machines up there. So if I do that, I can uh, go in here again. I can make the point of interest. I can highlight the machinery here. I can say a record and then go. So in this way you get some sort of really nice uh, parallax effect because uh, the foreground and background that moves in, uh, in uh, different uh, speeds but that creates a really nice effect. You can see the sun is getting a little bit tough on, uh, on the footage. It is a bit overexposed, but I hope we can save it in post. At least it's only the sun. Let's just stop here. So what else can we do? Fun stuff here. 
Oh, that's a nice, 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 nice. That's nice. Let's just go back here. And uh, go back to normal. Not land. Normal. Like that. Simply do it like that. And then often the simple movements are often the ones that create uh, the, the real cool stuff. So let's just stop the video. Ah, maybe I could just let it run. So we just fly forward like this. Also, really, another nice move that I want to show you that uh, you can use is that uh, let's just figure out how we're going to do this. But that, that would be a nice reveal shot. Oh, there's an antenna there. <laughs> we should watch out for that one. We don't want to be caught with the antenna. No, 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 no. But I can bring it over here so I can see it very clearly so I exactly know what I'm doing. Maybe it would have even better been better to do it on the other side of this pile. So now here we have the pile. So what happens here is I simply raise the drone. Maybe I will keep it, keep the gimbal pointing a little bit downward. So what happens now when I raise the drone, I will just straighten the gimbal. Let go. That was a bad one. I think we should actually do something else. Sometimes you just need to try out different stuff and see what works in real life. So the, now we change the plan and we will raise the drone. And once we see uh, the stuff that is behind this uh, hill, then we simply tilt the gimbal. So let's go up. And then we start tilting the gimbal right about now. Look at that. That's a much, much better shot basically keeping the front of uh, the stuff that's uh, inside on top of this pile in the center. And of course it works the other way if you just fly forward. Just tilt up the gimbal. What I would like to do now is to fly on the other side of this hill and then turn the drone towards me because in that way we will have not to shoot against the sun. So if we go over here like this. So we have a lot more light to work with here. So that way we can do some of the same exercises. And nothing is uh, over or underexposed here, so we just fly forward here. It's slightly underexposed, so that's lovely. So I can just tilt up the gimbal like that. And there you can see me standing next to the car. And then I can tilt the gimbal again. So I get a really nice top-down shot of me and the car. Like that. I think that's more or less it. Maybe we should grab a few photos while we're here. So the control of the gimbal is not very precise and that's because I've used the reduced gimbal settings or reduced the gimbal settings uh, smoothness uh, for uh, the reaction of, uh, of uh, how the, the gimbal is reacting when I touch the dial. And in case that you uh, missed that video, I can link it up here so you can uh, do that operation yourself. It makes the footage look a lot more nice and smooth. We are running out of battery. So we need to make some decisions fast here. Let me just switch it into photo mode here. Say okay. Let's grab a few photos here. You can download free photo samples you can play around with through a link in the description below. Both JPEG and RAW will be available. 
Maybe I want to go to the other side here and get it with the sun. With the sun in the back. Like that. Modest about around 100. Battery level is low. So the now, aircraft will go to the home point in 10 seconds. No, it will not because I cancelled it. You should be very careful not cancelling this too long because uh, it can lead to a lot of problems. So let me just get a few more, more here. This one. That puts me a little bit under pressure here. Okay, so let's bring it back. Oh, shit. <laughs> Cancel, yes. Why are they putting the landing button next to the return to home button? So now it's coming home. <laughs> let's just switch it into video and capture the video when it goes back. A really funny story is that uh, once I was uh, flying uh, at uh, Kronborg, this was, uh, you know, the castle that I used in the 8K uh, Hyperlapse video that I made for the Mavic Air 2, which I link up here. I actually activated with my old Mavic Air, I actually the, the auto landing when I was uh, over water. Let me just see if it's here. That's here. <laughs> so I actually ended up initiating landing over water up there, and that was uh, not uh, very smart, actually. <laughs> it's kind of stupid. Uh, but luckily I figured it out before it landed into the water and uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe it would have stopped before it hit the water, I hope so. But uh, you need to be careful not to uh, switch, not to choose the wrong landing mode. Or you could simply just fly it back manually because then you don't have uh, that kind of uh, problems. So the drone is back. And, oh, sh precision landing on. What kind of precision landing was that? It was about to land on. <laughs> so, so that was a, a short evening flight just showing you this uh, Faxe Kajpol. I hope you enjoyed this uh, small trip uh, around this uh, unique area. At least I did. And I'm looking forward to watch the footage when I get back home and to color grade it to see what we can get out of it. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.